All right, so this is going to be the final topic um, for uh, the final that we need to cover. And uh, so trees is the last topic. And this is an extension of uh, the previous topic that we covered, which is graphs, right? So trees are basically special graphs and uh, with ha which have some special properties. And we're going to learn about that uh, in this chapter. So what are we going to cover in this chapter? We're going to have a basic introduction to trees. We're going to uh, cover uh, very, very basic applications of trees. And the main part of the chapter is going to be around uh, tree traversal. That is how to navigate within a tree. And then we're going to learn about spanning trees. So how to build a tree that spans all vertices. Um, um, that spans all vertices and we're also going to talk about minimum spanning trees all right so uh, this is uh, all that we are going to cover in this chapter okay so uh, let's get started with the basic introduction to trees and we're going to learn about some terms and terminology that we're going to use uh, later on in this chapter as we study tree traversal and spanning trees Okay, so let's uh, get started with uh, the introduction to trees. We're going to learn about rooted trees. Uh, we learn uh, how trees can be used as models to represent certain specific graphs or specific uh, networks. Uh, we're going to learn about some properties, special properties that uh, the trees hold. Okay, let's start by learning uh, about some basic definitions. Uh, so let's start by uh, defining a tree first. Okay, so uh, the basic definition of a tree is that it has to be connected, all right? It has to be a connected graph. That, sh that means it should not have any disconnected components hanging around like it is possible in a graph. And it should not have any simple circuits. All right, so let's look at some examples that are given here and understand which of these given graphs can be trees and which cannot. So we have been given four graphs, G1, G2, G3, and G4. And of the four of these, G1 and your G2 are graphs, and your G3 and G4 are, uh, G, I mean, G1 and G2 are trees, and G3 and G4 are not trees. So let's look a little more closely to learn why so. So uh, G1 has uh, all the components, all the vertices are connected, and there is no cycle. The same uh, is true for G2. All the vertices are connected in the graph, and there is no cycle. However, let's take a look at G3 now. So if you look at G3, if you start traveling from A, go to B, and then you can go to E, and then you go to D, and then you come back to A. So what is this? You have a cycle, right? So your, gra your graph G3 has a cycle in it, and hence it cannot be a tree. All right? So now uh, let's take a look at... Uh, Let's take a look at G4, right, and see why G4 cannot be a tree. So what you notice here is if you start at A, you from A you can go to F, right? So that is just one connected component. Other than that, you have another connected component, which is it starts at C, you can go to E, you can go to B, and then you can go to D. But these two by themselves are disconnected. You can go, not go from A to any of these vertices. Uh, and the same way, you cannot go from any of these vertices to A or F. And therefore, you have two connected components in that graph, right? But for it to be a tree, all the vertices have to be connected, right? And so your graph G4 cannot be a tree. All right. So therefore, once again, uh, for a graph to be a tree, it has to have all the vertices connected. OK. Um, and uh, also, there should not be any cycles in your graph. All right. So now moving on, uh, let's take a look at another definition, which is uh, a forest. OK. So like the name suggests, a forest is basically a collection of trees, 
right so multiple a bunch of trees together make up a forest all right so um, a forest once again does not have any circuits or any cycles all right however uh, uh, it is not connected so it is a bunch of trees put together that makes up a forest so the example that we uh, looked at in uh, the previous case when we were looking at uh, trees uh, that is the graph g4 above here uh, is an example of a forest and the two uh, connected components that we talked about here each of those is a tree by itself right so your g4 graph g4 represents a forest and not a tree right whereas your graph g3 is neither a tree nor a forest because it has cycles in it all right so if you have disconnected components uh, in a graph but no cycles then you can get a forest uh, uh, which contains multiple trees if you contain cycles you can definitely not do anything about it there can be no trees possible in that scenario all right so in this chapter we're going to be covering a couple of theorems but we're not going to be covering any of the proofs of the theorems right so uh, the first theorem here states that if you have an undirected graph it can be a tree only if there is just a single path a unique path between any two vertices right so uh, in a tree we know that all the vertices have to be connected right uh, so basically this theorem uh, tells us that there has to be exactly one way to reach any two uh, between any two vertices in a given graph there is only there can be only one way to reach a given vertex from another given vertex there has to be a unique path between any pair of vertices in your graph all right now moving forward let's look at how trees can be used as models and what exactly are the applications of uh, trees all right so uh, like uh, it says here uh, trees have uh, applications in computer science definitely that's why we are studying trees here in chemistry geology botany psychology and several other areas right so let's look at uh, a couple of examples here so the trees the first example uh, that is uh, given here is how uh, trees are used to structure hydrocarbons um, hydrocarbons in your organic chemistry right so uh, trees have a huge application in uh, the field of your organic chemistry to tell if uh, two hydrocarbons are similar or not right that means uh, these two are isomers or not all right so that is one application now another application uh, that is given right here uh, gives you uh, uh, an, uh, uh, how organization of a computer file system is done right so what is the root um, you know root directory uh, which is basically given here and then what are the folders in your root directory and what are the folders within those folders and so on and so forth all right as you go down so you're using a tree structure to represent the file organization uh, in a given computer so that's another application of a tree so another example is given right there so trees can be used to represent the structure of organization all right of how an institution works uh, and show the hierarchy of, uh, of uh, the people and uh, the positions they are in uh, uh, within that organization so for example you have the president at the top then you have VPs of different divisions at the next level and then under the VP you have directors and so on and so forth right so the hierarchy of the people working in an organization at different um, uh, positions can also be represented using trees now let's take a look at uh, some quick definitions uh, what exactly is meant by a rooted tree all right so um, you can pick any one of the vertices in the graph um, or in the tree to be a root 
example, right, in your tree to be a root. And every other edge and every other vertex is going to face away from that root, okay? Uh, that is called a root tree. So here, for example, you have been given uh, a simple tree which is unrooted. That means none of the vertices have been selected as the root, okay? So uh, if, let's say, you select A, uh, as a, a vertex that's going to be a root, okay? So this is the rooted tree that you would get, right? So A is at the root of the tree, right at the top, right? And all the connected vertices to A face away from A, right? And there are edges uh, that go away from A towards these uh, vertices that are connected uh, uh, by these edges, Okay, so A is connected to, what do you see here, B, um, we see B, C, and D, uh, D, right? So that's what we see here. A is connected to B, C, and D with edges that are facing away from A. Now B is connected to F and G, that is what is shown here. And um, uh, your C is connected to E, and D is not connected to anything else. All right, so this is how you build a rooted tree. So you can pick any vertex, all right, in your tree to become a root, and then you have to start, uh, you have to put that at the top of the tree, and then connect edges uh, uh, between that and all the vertices it's connected to by facing the edges away from the root of the tree, right? So what if we had picked C as the root of the tree? Then that is the root of tree that you would get, right? So you can pick any vertex to become uh, uh, the root of the tree and you would end up with a different rooted tree every single time. All right, so let's learn about some of the terminology uh, that comes along with trees uh, that we need to remember, right? And we're going to use this terminology again and again going forward, right? So uh, the first uh, term that we learned about was the root of the tree, right? So root of the tree is uh, usually all the way at the top of the tree. Okay, now uh, let's look at some uh, more terms here. Um, what exactly is a parent, right? So let's say you have some vertex, right, within a tree, right, that can be anywhere uh, uh, in the tree. Then, uh, so the, the vertex that is directly uh, above this given vertex V is called the parent of V. All right, and basically there is a directed edge from uh, U to V, right? So there has to be a directed edge from U to V. For example, if you pick Jacob 1 in this example, the parent of Jacob 1 is uh, Nicholas, right? So um, now when you say U is the parent of V, obviously V has to be the child of U. Right, so if Nicholas is the parent, then your Jacob is the child. Okay, uh, then your uh, Jacob is going to be the child. Okay, now uh, if there are multiple children, right, if a, a given vertex has multiple children, for example, if you pick that one, if you pick uh, this vertex, it has three children. All right. So obviously, if it has multiple children, each of these children are siblings of one another. That brings us to the uh, uh, next terminology here, which is siblings. OK, now uh, moving forward, um, uh, let's uh, take a look at uh, uh, let's take a look at uh, what are ancestors and what are descendants. Okay, so if you pick uh, some vertex, right, if you pick some vertex, uh, then the ancestors are all the vertices that fall uh, in the path from this vertex to the root. Okay, so from Nicholas 2 to the root, everything uh, in excluding your Nicholas 2 is the ancestor of your Nicholas 2. So that would be that uh, Johan 1 is an ancestor and your Nicholas is another ancestor. Okay, now those are your ancestors. 
Uh, now let's uh, take a look at the next terminology which is uh, descendants right so descendants are kind of an opposite of your uh, ancestors so if you pick a, a vertex right in your tree then every uh, single child and the grandchild that comes below uh, basically uh, makes up your uh, descendants so all of these are going to be the descendants of Johan 1 all right uh, now uh, let's uh, move forward and look at uh, the next terminology so we have looked at ancestors uh, we have looked at ancestors and we have looked at descendants the next term we need to learn about is a leaf all right so uh, the bottommost child in the tree which does not have any children by itself is called the leaf right so in this example uh, you have Johan 3 Jacob 2 do not have any children so they are leaves so Nicholas 2 does not have any children Daniel does not have any children Nicholas 1 does not have any children Jacob 1 does not have any children so all of these are the leaves of uh, of your tree that uh, uh, that you're considering here now uh, the next thing to consider here is internal vertex all right so uh, anything that is not a leaf any vertex that is not a leaf in your uh, tree is going to be an internal uh, internal vertex or in other words internal vertex always has children all right so uh, for example each of these is an internal vertex right so every internal vertex is going to have children all right every internal vertex is going to have children now uh, moving forward let's look at the next term which is uh, the subtree all right so if you pick a vertex uh, in the tree all right the subtree with a as the root is the entire subgraph right which is formed by taking a uh, as the tree and separating it out from your tree here so for example if you consider this vertex right let's say this is the vertex a you're considering then the subtree with this as your root is going to be that one right it's going to be that uh, tree where your johan one is going to be the root and the rest of uh, uh, the tree going forward can be separated out to form a subtree for you all right so now let's try to uh, use the terminology that we le learned in the previous uh, slide and uh, basically uh, solve the exercise in this uh, slide okay so uh, what is the first question what is the parent of C what is the parent of C All right so where is C in the given tree C is right there and the parent of tree is what is directly above C in the tree which is your B okay so the parent of C is B all right now what are the children of G is the next question where is G G is right there so the children are the vertices that are directly connected to G and below it that would make all three of these H I and G uh, J are going to be the children of G okay now uh, what are the siblings of H okay so where exactly is H H is right there so siblings of H are going to be your I and J okay so the siblings of H are going to be I and J now what are the ancestors of the node E so let me erase the whole thing so we can do this again all right so what are the ancestors of uh, of uh, E so where is E again E is right there so ancestors of E are every single vertex that comes on the path from the root to the node E which is going to be C B and A but of course excluding E itself right 
So C, B, and A are the ancestors of E. The next question is, what are the descendants of B? Right? So that is your B. So every vertex that comes below, right, D, uh, below your node B in the tree is going to be the descendant of B. So that's going to be C, E, and also your D. Okay, so your C, D, E are going to be the descendants of uh, your node B, right? So now take a let's uh, let's take a look at the question two here. Find all the internal vertices and all the leaves, right? So let's first pick the leaves, right? So the leaves do not have any children. That's what we know, right? So the leaves are the end vertices that do not have any children. So which ones are those here? So D, E, F, you have K, I, L, and M. So none of these vertices have any children of their own. And therefore, all of these are going to be your, uh, your leaves. So D, E, F, I, K, L, and M. Right? I, K, L, and M, these are all the leaves. Now, everything that is not a leaf will be your internal vertex. So that's going to be your, uh, your vertex A, B, C, G, H, and J. All right? So A, B, C, G, H, and J are all of your internal vertices. Okay. Now, let's take a look at the question number three. Okay, so what is the subtree rooted at G is the question. So where is your uh, node G? Your vertex G is right there. So the subtree is going to be the entire tree that comes below G, all right, with all the descendants of G and the edges uh, that are connected to the descendants of the G and with its root at its G. So this whole thing can be separated out and that is going to be the subtree which is rooted at uh, your uh, root G, right? Which is rooted at G. So let's take a look at uh, the next uh, uh, kind of tree, which is an emery tree or an emery rooted tree. Okay. So let's look at the definition of uh, an emery tree and a full emery tree uh, in here. So what exactly is an emery tree? An emery tree is one where every internal vertex, right, that a vertex with children has no more than M children. So it should have a maximum of M children. It can have less than M children, but it cannot have more than M children, okay? So that is called an emery tree. Now, what is exactly a full emery tree? A full emery tree is when each of the internal vertices has exactly M children, all right? So if you have uh, an emery tree, all right, uh, or you have an emery tree where you have every internal vertex has M children or less, then it's simply called an emery tree. If you have a tree where each of the internal vertices has exactly M children, that's when it's called a full emery tree. Now, if you take uh, an emery tree with m equals 2, that's where you get a binary tree. Okay, that's an example where you get a binary tree. So here uh, we have several examples. Uh, you, we have four trees given here, T1, T2, T3, and T4. And uh, let's uh, look and analyze each of these trees and see which, what kind of trees these are. So your T1 uh, in this example is a full binary tree, all right, because every internal vertex, every internal vertex has exactly two children, all right? Every internal vertex has exactly two children and therefore uh, it is a full binary tree. Let's take a look at the tree T2. So in T2, this is a full three-array tree because Let's look at every internal vertex once again. So every internal vertex has exactly three children, okay? And therefore, this is a full three-array tree. Now, uh, let's look at uh, T3. 
all right in here every internal vertex has exactly five children all right has exactly five children so your t3 is a full fivery tree all right it's a full fivery tree now let's take a look at your t uh, your tree t4 all right so t4 is uh, basically uh, a three-ery tree but it is not a full three-ery tree why because if you consider this internal node right it has only two children right whereas the other internal roads these two uh, uh, these two have uh, three children each and that internal road has two children right so every internal row node here has a maximum of three children or less right so since every internal node does not have the same number of children it is not a full tree however it is still a three-ery tree okay it is still a three-ery tree it's just not a full three-ery tree okay so now let's take a look at uh, ordered rooted trees okay so uh, here when we say they're ordered root trees what we mean is that uh, the children uh, are ordered in a particular way okay so uh, that means the children of each of the internal vertices follow a certain order right so you have something like a left child and something called a right child okay so the or the children are ordered from left to right okay so uh, another definition is that of a binary tree which is ordered uh, will have uh, at most two children and uh, uh, one of these children is going to be a left child and the other uh, uh, child is going to be the right child so uh, the tree that is rooted uh, at the left child is called the left subtree and the tree that is rooted at the right a child is called your right uh, subtree okay so uh, let's take a look at the uh, example uh, uh, which is given right here so let's see what uh, are the questions in your example here so you have been given a tree um, uh, a tree called T uh, okay and what has been asked what are the left and the right children of the vertex D so where is your vertex D so your vertex D is right there so what is your left child left child is F and right child is G so that's very simple now what are the left and the right subtrees of C so let's take a look at where the vertex C is so the vertex C is right there so your left subtree is the tree that is rooted at your left subchild. So left child is H and this is the tree containing H and F that is your left subtree. Now what is your right subtree? Your right subtree is the tree which is rooted at your right child that is going to be that that is going to be your right subtree. So like I said before, we are going to be covering a couple of theorems, but we are not going to be covering the proofs of the, any of these theorems, right? So the next theorem that we need to know about is that uh, in a tree which has n vertices in it, it has exactly n minus 1 edges, all right? So basically, this can be proved on the premise that there cannot be any cycles, uh, that's what uh, that's how you get the definition of a tree right there cannot be any cycles in a tree and therefore the maximum number of edges between n vertices is going to be n minus 1 all right so uh, this is an important thing that you need to remember going forward all right, so some more terminology before we kind of wrap up uh, with the terms that you need to know and understand before we do tree traversal and uh, spanning trees. All right, uh, so what exactly is uh, uh, meant by the level of a tree and what is the height of a rooted tree? Okay, these are two very, very important terms that you need to understand okay so uh, the level uh, of a given vertex so the level of 
A level is basically something uh, that you tell with respect to a given vertex. Okay, so you can give the level of different vertices within your tree. So live, the level of a given vertex V is uh, basically uh, the number of vertices that fall uh, on the path from the root to that vertex, from the root to that vertex within, uh, within your tree. Okay, and what exactly is the height of the tree? Height of the tree is basically, uh, a, a height of the tree is the maximum number of levels uh, of uh, the vertices. So uh, the vertex with the highest level gives you the height of the tree in simple words. So let's look at an example uh, of, uh, of how to find the level of a tree and the height of a tree to understand this further. So let's take the example of the tree given on the right, uh, uh, right here, right? So uh, what is the first question? Find the level of each vertex in the tree to the right, okay? So uh, what is going to be the level of your vertex A, that is your root? So uh, there are uh, no nodes or there are no vertices from the root to the root right between the root and itself and so the level of a root is going to be zero right so the level of each of these nodes b uh, b j and k is going to be one because there is one node uh, from uh, the, uh, from this uh, given from these given vertices b j and k to the root all right so the level of b j k are all one now, uh, the next set of vertices here. For C, E, F, and L, the level is going to be 2 because there are two vertices on their path to the root. Okay, uh, From each of these nodes to uh, uh, the root, the path, if you look at, there are two nodes. All right. Now, the vertices uh, D, J, I, M, DJI, uh, DJI M and N, for all of these the level is 3 and uh, for H, uh, for H the level is going to be 4, right? And how do you find the height of the tree? The height of the tree is the maximum level, right? The maximum level of any vertex in the tree, which in this case is going to be 4, which is the level of the node H. Okay, so once again, what is the level of a given vertex? You're going to basically trace the path from that vertex to the root and count how many vertices lie on that path. And that's going to give you the level uh, of that given vertex, right? So once you count the level of every single vertex in your tree, uh, the highest level in the tree is going to give you the height of the tree. So finally, we have come to the last set of definitions uh, or terminologies uh, for uh, your trees, okay, uh, uh, which is basically our balanced emery tree. So we talked about an emery tree and a full emery tree. Uh, now let's talk about another kind of emery tree, which is a balanced emery tree, okay? So a rooted emery tree of a height h is said to be balanced if all the leaves are at either level H or H minus one, all right? So uh, when do you see, when do you say that a given tree is balanced? If all the leaf nodes, right? If all the leaf vertices are either um, at a height H or at a height H minus one, okay? So let's take a look at three examples here. So we have been given three trees, T1, uh, T2 and uh, T3. So in T1, if you notice, right, so every child has, uh, every internal vertex has exactly two children. So this is a two-ary tree or a binary tree, okay? Uh, and it is a full binary tree. Yes, of course, it is a full binary tree because every internal vertex has exactly two children, okay? Now let's see if it is a balanced uh, a tree. Yes, it is a balanced tree because what is the height 
of the uh, a treaty one height of the treaty one is the largest level which is going to be one two three uh, and four all right so four is the height of the treaty one and uh, that's uh, basically what you see here is most of the leaf nodes right most of the leaf nodes are either at a height h or at a height h minus one all right and so so if all the leaf nodes are at a height of h or h minus one you say it is a balanced uh, a balanced uh, tree emery tree so in this case you have a full balanced binary tree all right so your t1 is a fully balanced uh, uh, binary tree what about t2 so you have some leaves at height h some leaves at height h minus 1 and also you have another leaf at height h minus 2 therefore t2 is not an example of a balanced tree t2 is not a balanced tree okay however uh, if you notice carefully every internal node has exactly two children so this is a full binary tree right this is a full binary tree but this is not a balanced binary tree so what about t3 so in T3, uh, what we see here is every internal node has a maximum of three children, right? Uh, but it also has less than three children. So if you consider, uh, if you consider that internal node, it has three children, right? But if you consider this internal node, it has exactly one child, okay? So uh, you have internal nodes which have three children or less in your t3 okay so your t3 is not a full uh, three-year tree okay but it is just a three-year tree is it balanced for it to be balanced every single leaf has to be at a height h or h minus one so if you notice that uh, all the leaf nodes are at a height h here so this is a balanced uh, tree okay so t3 is the example of a, a balanced tree which is a three-year tree a balanced three-year tree but it is not a full three-year tree okay so here are uh, basically three different kinds of trees uh, uh, and uh, basically i think the definitions of a full tree and a uh, a balanced tree and an emery and a simple emery tree has become clear with these three examples okay so now we come to the um, uh, next part which is tree traversal which is very very important and uh, tree traversal is something you're going to do here and going forward you're going to learn about tree traversal again and again in several parts of uh, several different courses of computer science uh, you're going to lo learn about uh, tree traversal uh, in uh, uh, algorithms you're going to learn about uh, tree traversal in compiler design and uh, so on right so it has a, a great importance in the field of computer science all right so uh, this section mainly consists of uh, traversal alg algorithms and we're going to cover uh, three different kinds of uh, traversals uh, which are going to be pre-order traversal in order traversal and uh, a post order traversal okay and uh, once we learn about these traversal algorithms uh, we can basically uh, take an expression all right an expression which involves arithmetic operations and convert it into infix prefix or postfix notation right so uh, the computer when it's trying to evaluate an expression like a plus b minus c or something like that what it has to do is it has to convert the expression into one of these notations and fix prefix or postfix postfix notations before it can go ahead and solve that equation or expression okay so moving forward so what exactly is meant by tree traversal so uh, how do you systematically visit the different vertices in your tree uh, basically gives you a traversal okay and there are three main uh, uh, traversals uh, that is pre-order traversal uh, you have in-order traversal and 
post order traversal. We're going to learn uh, about each of these traversal uh, in a much more detail, but uh, let me just uh, give you a brief idea of uh, uh, what is meant by each of these traversals. So when you have a pre-order traversal, you are going to uh, visit um, uh, the route first, and then uh, you're going to uh, visit left and left node, and then you're going to visit the right node. Okay, uh, when you have an infix, um, uh, in, uh, sorry, in order traversal, then you are going to visit it in the order of left node first, then you visit the root followed by the right node. Now, if you have a post order traversal, then what you would do is you're going to visit the left node first, right node next, and finally the root node. Okay, so uh, now let's say you have a tree, okay, something uh, like that, okay, maybe uh, so on, all right. So uh, when you have uh, not just two uh, children, okay, you have multiple children involved. So there is a root, let's say, or there is a parent and it has multiple children. So how do you tell which one is your left and which one is your right? The important thing to remember is only the leftmost one is going to be your left child. Everything else is going to be the right child. Okay, everything else is going to be your right child. So that's one thing uh, that's very important that you need to remember going forward. Okay, so pre-order traversal, right? I'm not going to go over the whole definition. Uh, you don't need to remember the definition either. All you need to remember is that in order to do a pre-order traversal, you are going to first visit the root. All right, you're going to first visit the root node and then followed by that, you're going to visit the left, uh, which is going to be the, that one. And then it's going to uh, visit the right one, which is going to be each of the nodes going in that direction. All right. So here is an example of how to do pre-order traversal uh, uh, for a given tree that is uh, that has been given to you, right? Uh, following, once again, let me write that down. So it's going to be your um, uh, root first, then you're going to visit the left and then the right, okay? So that's the order that you need to follow. So given that tree, you're first going to visit the root which is your A, and then you're going to visit the left. So the left node is not just a leaf, it comes with a whole tree below it. So you're going to write uh, down the entire uh, subtree, right? Next. Then you're going to write the uh, uh, next node, which is going to be your C as it is, and then uh, the next right node, which is your D. Okay, so D is once again not a leaf node. It comes with an entire subtree with it. So you're going to draw the entire subtree along with the D. Now you have to once again do a pre-order traversal of the uh, 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 trees that are left here, which is going to be that tree and that tree, right? The, true uh, the tree rooted at D and the tree rooted at D. So A is written as it is. Now we have to do a pre-order traversal of this uh, tree that is rooted at B. So once again, you start with root, root is going to be B. So your root is going to be B, and then you're going to write your uh, uh, left, uh, left node, if it's single, or the entire subtree that is rooted at the left node, which is uh, this entire tree, okay? And then on uh, the, your right node, which is just F at this point of time. Uh, then you have your C. It comes down as it is. Now try, try, let's try to open up the next tree, which is rooted at D. Okay. So once again, you have to follow what? Root, left, and right. So root is your D. So you're going to for, first write down D. Okay. Next, you're going to visit the left 
one, which is your G. Okay, so this is uh, not a sing uh, just a single uh, word, uh, node, it has a subtree under it. So you're going to draw the entire subtree, which is rooted at G. Okay, and then we're going to write the right uh, node here, which is H, and followed by the next right node, which is I. Okay, now once again, you still have two more trees, one rooted at E and another one which is rooted at G. So you'll have to do another pre-order traversal of each of these uh, trees in order to uh, open them up. So uh, let's try to open up uh, this tree, the first one, which is rooted at E. So A, B come down as they are. Now, for uh, opening up the tree rooted at E, once again, we have to do a pre-order traversal. So you have to start at E, which is the root. So you have root, left, and right. So root is E as it is. Then left node is J, single node. So you write it as it is. Right node is another subtree. So you're going to draw the subtree rooted at K. All right. So uh, the next thing is F, C, D come down as they are from the previous step. Then you're going to open up uh, the next subtree, which is rooted at G. So you have to uh, traverse it as root first, left, and then right. So you write down G, which is the root. And then you're going to visit uh, the, uh, the left child, which is L, and then the right child, which is M. So that the order in which they come is G, L, M and then followed by H and, uh, H and I that come down from the previous step, all right? So now uh, we, are, we still have one more tree that we need to open up, which is rooted at K, okay? So from A, B, uh, A, B, E, and J, they're gonna come down from the previous step as it is. Then you have to open up the tree that is rooted at K. So how do you do that? Once again, visit root first, so K first, then your left subchild, uh, which is N, and then your right, both the right childs, that is O and P, All right? So K first, N, O, P. And then you're going to write down the rest of it from the previous step as it is. So now this is basically called the pre-order traversal of the given tree. Okay, so that's the pre-order traversal of the given tree. So as we move forward, we are going to learn about how to do an in-order traversal and a post-order traversal of a, uh, of a similar tree, all right? How to open it up and basically travel uh, the tree, traverse the tree in uh, each of these given orders. So now, uh, moving on, let's take a look at how in-order traversal is done. So let's say you have a tree, then the order in which you visit the nodes is left, uh, it's going to be the left node first, followed by the root node, and then followed by uh, each of the right nodes, right? So, <clears throat> uh, so this is the order in which you would go. So you would first visit, visit the left, followed by the root, and then you go on uh, with the uh, right nodes. So that is the order in which you do in-order traversal. So let's take a look at an example of in-order traversal to understand how it is done. Okay, so uh, this is uh, the same example that we covered in the previous slide to understand uh, pre-order traversal. But in, for this graph uh, given here, we are going to do an in-order traversal. So once again, what is the order? You're going to cover left first, then you're going to write down root followed by the right node. That is the order in which you traverse the tree or uh, basically uh, move from vertex to vertex. Traverse the tree is moving from vertex to vertex in a tree for in-order traversal, all right? So you start with the uh, leftmost node. So in this tree, the root is going to be A, right? Left is B, right? Uh, left is your B and then right you have C and D. So since B is not just a single node, you have to get the entire subtree down, all right, for uh, writing down left first. And then you're going to visit the root, which is going to be your A, uh, followed by 
um, your right node, which is uh, the first right node is C, followed by that the second right node, which is D, which is not once again just a single node. It has a whole subtree below it. So even this one, you have to draw the whole subtree. Okay, now the next step, you have to open up the trees which are left over uh, in this step uh, to uh, with another in order traversal, uh, okay, to visit some more nodes. So let's try to do an in order traversal of each of these trees, okay? Let's start with B. So once again, which one are we going to visit first? Left, and the left node here is going to be E. Okay, and it's not a single node, it has an entire subtree under it, so you draw the whole subtree under E. Then you're going to visit the root, which is your B, uh, and then you're going to visit your right, which is F. So you're going to write down F there. And A and C come down from the previous step as they are. Now we're going to try to open up the second tree here, which is rooted at D. So how would you visit this? Left first. So left is going to be your G, but there is a subtree below it. So you're going to draw the whole subtree under your G. Um, your whole subtree under your G. Followed by that, you are going to write, uh, write down your uh, root node, which is your D. Okay, And then you're going to visit your right child, which is uh, going to be H and then followed by I. So now in the next step, we once again have two more trees that we need to open up using the in order traversal. One rooted at E and the other one is rooted at G. So once again, we're going to do an in order traversal of these two trees uh, in order to uh, open them up. Okay, so now how do you open that? So you have to visit the left node first. So the left node is going to be J, uh, which is a single node. So you write it down as it is. Then you're going to visit the root, which is E. You're going to write down E. Then you're going to visit the right node, which is K, but there is a tree underneath. So you're going to draw the whole tree that comes under your K. Now, followed by that, you have B, F, A, and C, uh, and they are going to come down as they are in the previous step, all right? Now, followed by that, you have a tree now, which is rooted at G, so we have to open that up. And how would you open that up? Once again, travel left, right, and uh, left root and right. So the left is going to be uh, your L, so that comes first. Then your root is going to be G, followed by that, your right is going to be M. And then you have D, H, and I come down from the previous step as it is. All right? So <clears throat> now, once again, you have a tree here. So you will have to do another in-order traversal of that tree rooted at K in order to open up the vertices in that tree, uh, in that tree rooted at K. So how would you do that? So J and D come, come down from the previous step as they are. And how would you traverse this tree? You have to visit the left first, which is going to be your N, okay? Followed by that, you're gonna visit your root, which is going to be your K. And then you're gonna visit all the right nodes, which is gonna be O and P, which is gonna be O and P. Now, uh, you're gonna write down all the other nodes from the previous step as they are, okay? So now there are no more subtrees left, so you don't have to open it up. And this is basically called the in-order traversal of the given graph, right? So this is called the in-order traversal of your given graph. Okay, so uh, the next kind of traversal is called the post-order traversal. And uh, uh, I think by now you would have guessed what is going to be the order of visiting. Uh, in here. So the order is going to be uh, the left node first, then you're going to visit the right node, that is every single right node, followed by your root node. Okay, so you're going to first visit the left node, followed by that you're going to visit every single right node, and then finally you're going to visit the root node. Okay, so uh, 
Okay, so finally, uh, we are going to look at an example uh, of how to do a post order traversal on the very same graph that we have been looking at uh, for the last few slides now uh, when we did in order traversal and, uh, uh, and uh, your pre order traversal. Okay, so but in here, once again, let me write it down how do you uh, traverse the gar graph? You have to visit the left. Uh, node first followed by that you have to visit every single right node followed by that you have to visit the root node all the way in the end okay so let's take a look at the graph given to you and see how to do the post order traversal of the given graph so first thing you're going to visit is the left node so the left node here is your B okay so B is not just a, a leaf node it has a whole subtree under it so you're going to write B down along with the entire subtree under it followed by that you're going to visit all the right nodes so the first right node is C it comes down as it is the next right node is D but that again has a subtree underneath so you're going to write down D along with the entire subtree okay now followed by that you're going to end it with the root node which is going to be a now uh, at this after this step you're going to see if uh, there are any more subtrees uh, that are left over that need to be further opened up all right so now let's take a look at each of the subtrees so the first subtree we're going to look at here is the subtree that is rooted at b so once again how do you visit it left first all the rights and then followed by that the root node so left is E and once again there is a subtree below so you're going to write down E followed by uh, the entire subtree underneath it then you're going to visit the right node which is F right and then you're going to visit the root which is your B then the node C comes down from the previous step as it is uh, the next uh, subtree that we are going to open up is the subtree that is rooted at D so how do you visit it first the start uh, you start with the left node which is going to be G and there is a tree below it so you have the subtree with G at the root then you're going to visit all the right nodes so you visit H and then followed by I and then finally you're going to visit the root node which is your D and then A comes down as it is from the previous step okay now we still have two more subtrees that need to be opened up in this step so the first subtree that we need to open up here is the one that is rooted at E so how do you visit them left first so the left is J okay then right uh, all the right uh, uh, nodes so there's only one right node which is K okay and but there is a subtree under it so the entire uh, subtree uh, with uh, a K as the root comes as uh, come, uh, you write down as it is then you're going to visit the root node which is E then you're going to write down your F B C uh, as it is from the previous step all right now followed by that you have a second subtree that you need to open up from the previous step which is rooted at G now how do you visit it again left first so L first then you visit the right which is M and then you visit the root which is your G so L M and G is the order in which that subtree opens up and then you're going to write down H I D A from the previous step as it is okay now uh, let's see there is one last subtree left in this step that needs to be opened up in the next step so uh, J comes down as it is from the previous step then you have to open up the last subtree which is rooted at K so how do you visit it left first which is going to be your N and then you're going to visit all the right nodes which is going to be O and then P and then you're going to visit the root node which is your uh, K okay so you have N O P K that come from uh, the subtree and then the rest of it uh, the rest of it uh, basically comes down from the previous step as it is so now you see there are no more uh, subtrees left okay to open up further so uh, what you have here is the post order traversal of all the nodes or all the vertices in the given graph okay 
So now we learned about how to take a graph and basically do a pre-order traversal, in-order traversal, and post-order traversal uh, visiting all the vertices in the graph, right? So now uh, let's come to the next topic, which is expression trees, right? So th these are what are used to uh, express complex uh, mathematical expressions uh, uh, by a computer, right? So uh, let's consider uh, the expression that is given to us. So what is given to us here is x plus y, and this up arrow is basically representative of to the power. So x plus uh, uh, y, up arrow 2 means it's the same as x plus y to the power of 2, okay? Uh, then you have plus x minus 4 divided by 3, okay? And you can basically come up with a binary uh, tree, all right? Uh, for the uh, uh, for the uh, given expression, all right? How can you come up with such a binary tree? Uh, you will have to have uh, you'll have to put either of the operands uh, as uh, the leaves followed by your operator in the root, okay? And you can build it up all the way until you get the expression, all right? So uh, you're going to start with the innermost brackets, right? So here you have x plus y. So how would you represent x plus y? x and y are supposed to be leaves followed by uh, the uh, x and y are supposed to be leaves followed by the operator at the root. Okay. Now uh, let's move on and uh, go to the, move on to the next brackets. So you have to uh, express that. Okay, so this whole thing is going to be a subtree. Okay, so uh, you have the you have uh, this entire thing uh, as a subtree. Okay, uh, and it's going to be the right subtree followed by that the other operator which is your two uh, as your right node, and then the operator which is joining both of these expressions is going to be at the root, which is going to be to the power of or the up arrow, okay? Uh, the very same way you can actually build the tree for x minus 4 over 3. So the innermost expression here is x minus 4. So how do you build a tree for that? So you have x and 4 as the leaf nodes, and the operator uh, joining them is minus, which is at the root. Now we have to uh, express the entire expression divided by 3. So take this entire uh, tree and this is going to become your left subtree. And on the right subtree, you're going to have the next uh, opera uh, operand, which is uh, 3. And then you're going to have the operator, which is divided by as the root. Okay. Now finally, you have this expression being represented by that tree. This expression is being represented by that tree and you have to join them together using a plus. Okay, so this uh, you have the left subtree for the left part of the expression right there. You have the right subtree for the right part of the expression right there and joining them both at the root is your plus symbol. Okay, so for any given expression, you can actually convert it into uh, a tree uh, like the one that is given here, all right? So you can come up with a binary tree for any expression uh, by building it bottom up. So you always have to start with the innermost expression in the innermost brackets and then build it uh, all the way up uh, with uh, always by adding the operators in the root. Okay, so in the previous slide, we looked at how to uh, uh, draw a graph or draw a tree given a mathematical expression, all right? So now uh, we are going to look at how uh, to basically get and get the mathematical expression back from a tree, okay? So uh, simply put, if we do an in-order traversal of uh, uh, that expression tree, we're going to get back the infix notation. Right. If we do a pre-order traversal of that expression tree, we are going to get back a prefix notation. And if we do a post-order traversal of the pre of the uh, uh, expression tree, we are going to get a postfix notation. Right. We're going to get to prefix notation and postfix notation in just a little bit. So let's focus on the infix notation for now.
okay so for example if you take the tree uh, that is uh, given right here right the very first tree uh, given in the picture and try to do an in order traversal of the tree let's see what is the expression you get back okay so uh, uh, let's uh, take a look at in order how is uh, in order traversal work in order traversal basically uh, what is the order in which you traverse it is going to be first the left node followed by the root node and then followed by all the right nodes okay so let's uh, try to do uh, that kind of a traversal on the first tree that is given here so you're going to first visit the left uh, node so left node is your plus okay but there is a subtree rooted at plus so you're going to have plus and then you have x and then you have y uh, uh, the subtree under it and then you're going to visit the root which is your divided by followed by the right right once again you have a subtree rooted at plus so that's going to be a plus again and you have x and then three all right now the next time uh, we still have to do another in order traversal to open up the subtrees that we got in this uh, step right so how do we do that once again do an in order traversal so visit the left node first that's going to be your x and then visit the root next that's going to be plus and then followed by that you're going to visit the right one next which is going to be y the divided by is going to come down from the previous step as it is followed by that you're going to once again do an in order traversal so you're going to start with x and then a uh, root uh, that is going to be your plus and then you're going to visit the right node which is going to be three okay so this is the expression uh, uh, that uh, we built the uh, the tree for in the previous slide okay but one thing that you need to notice here is that even the other two trees that are given here will produce the very same expression right so i want you to try to come up with the expression for the other two uh, uh trees that are given here right you will notice that you will end up with the very same expression right so how is it possible uh to have the same expression but um multiple trees for it okay this is happening because we are not taking into consideration uh, the parentheses we are not giving an order in which these operators need to be executed we do not know whether the plus needs to be executed first this divide need to be executed first or this plus need to be executed first and that is why we are getting different trees all right so if we were to add the parentheses okay if we were to add the parentheses then uh, uh the 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 expression with parentheses would only represent the first tree and not the second and the third tree all right so having parentheses in the expression is very important uh when you're basically coming up with the infix notation right uh, from a given tree or when you are drawing the tree uh, for a given expression uh, uh, for a given expression so parentheses play an important role uh, either way when you are converting expression to tree or from tree back to expression the parentheses need to be in place to represent which operators uh, which operators need to be performed first and which operators need to be executed uh, later right uh, but that is not true when you do a pre or a pre order traversal of the expression tree or a post order uh, traversal of the expression tree it's going to become a little more clear when we go on to do uh, uh, the pre order and post order uh, uh, traversals for the expression trees okay so uh like in the previous example we know uh given a tree you can actually uh, uh do an in order traversal to get the infix notation similar way you can do a pre order traversal of that tree to get back a prefix notation all right so what you get is called a prefix notation and uh in the prefix notation you have the operators all right the operators always um are basically are come before uh, the operands right or the operators come before the operands that is indicative of your prefix notation so once again what is your 
a pre-order traversal. Your pre-order traversal is going to be when you're going to visit the left, uh, 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 when you're going to visit the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the root node, and then followed by that, you're going to visit the left, and then you're going to visit all the right nodes, right? So it's root left right is indicative of your prefix notation, okay? Uh, is indicative of your pre-order traversal, and the pre-order traversal of the expression tree will give you your prefix notation, right? So uh, let's take the same expression that we considered in the previous couple of slides, right? And uh, the tree that we got for uh, that expression and if we did a, a, a pre-order traversal of that tree this is the expression uh, that we would get back and this expression is said to be in the prefix form or the prefix notation and if you notice carefully all the operators come before the operands so all the operators plus and uh, you know, uh, divide by to the power of minus all of them come before, and the operands that is x, y, two, x, four, three are coming later on. All right, so that is indicative of your prefix notation. Okay, so uh, since we went over how to get a, 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 a pre-order traversal, how to do a pre-order traversal of a tree, I'm not going to go over it again. Um, so you can, uh, as an exercise, I want you to consider the tree in the previous slide for that given expression and do a pre-order traversal of it and see if you get back the expression uh, given right here. Right. So the important thing that we are going to learn here is that uh, once we have the prefix notation, uh, you can directly uh, evaluate the expression while it is still in the prefix notation. You do not have to convert it into infix notation in order to evaluate the expression. And also, the having brackets or having parentheses is not very important in the prefix notation. Uh, your prefix notation is always going to generate the same tree, okay? It's always going to generate the same tree. Having parentheses is not very important here. So uh, we are going to consider the example that is given here on the right, right, uh, which is uh, expression, uh, uh, mathematical expression uh, with numbers and uh, uh, operators in between, but it is in the prefix notation, right? And we're going to learn about how to derive uh, uh, or how to evaluate the given expression right and get the result and get the final result while it is still in the prefix notation okay how would you go about doing that okay so uh, in uh, the prefix notation when you're trying to evaluate it you always start from the back and then move forward okay you're going to start from the back and then move forward so uh, you're going to uh, start from the back move forward Keep going, keep going until you hit an operator. And when you hit an operator, you stop. So you started with four, right? So let me do that again. So you started with four. Four is an operand. Three is an operand. Let's do this again. So four is an operand. Three is an operand. Two is an operand. And then we hit an operator, which is uh, upward arrow. That is to the power off. Okay, so when you hit the operator, you're going to stop and evaluate the expression uh, that is going to uh, be between the, uh, the two operands that come after the operator that you stopped at, okay, which is going to be two and three. So this uh, upward arrow has to be applied to two and three, all right, and evaluated. So two to the power three gives you eight. So you're going to replace uh, upward arrow two and three with just the number eight in the next step. Okay, now once again, you're going to start uh, at the end, uh, move forward until you hit an operand. So you start at four, move forward, move forward until you hit, uh, uh, until you hit the uh, slash, which is divides by. Okay, and then you're going to apply divides by on the two uh, operands that come after. 
So you're going to do 8 divide by 4 and evaluate the expression that is going to give you uh, 2. Okay, so you're going to replace divide by 8 and 4 with just the number 2. Okay, in the next step. Now, once again, you're going to start from the back, move forward. So you're going to start at 2, uh, you're going to start at 2, move forward, 5, 3, 2, star. When you hit star, you're going to stop. Okay, and then evaluate star on the two, uh, uh, on the two, uh, operators uh, that are given uh, after uh, on the two operands that are given after so you're going to evaluate 2 times 3 right uh, you're going to do 2 times 3 and the result is going to be 6 so uh, the uh, multiplication 2 and 3 are going to be replaced by the number 6 in the previous step uh, in the next step okay so now once again you're going to start moving from uh, from right to left, okay, from back to front. So you start moving from 2, 5, 6, and then you hit a operator, which is minus. So minus has to be applied to 6 and 5. So 6 minus 5 has to be evaluated. That gives you a 1. So minus 6 and 5 will be replaced by uh, uh, the result 6 minus 5. That is going to be 1 in the next step. Now, once again, you start at the end, move forward. So 2, 1, and then you hit a plus. And that's where you stop. So plus has to be applied to the two operands that come right after. That is 1 and 2. So 1 plus 2 is going to evaluate to 3. And that is your final solution. And that is the value of the given expression, which is in the prefix notation. All right, so there are some examples in your homework that I want you to work on, right, where you have been given uh, an expression in the prefix notation or in the postfix notation, and you have been asked to evaluate. When you have been asked to do that, you are not supposed to convert it into infix notation and then evaluate. You are supposed to evaluate the expression while it is in prefix form or while it is in the postfix form and then give the solution like we did for for this example right so work on those examples and if you have any questions you can come by during office hours this week and uh, I can explain it to you much better okay so uh, just like we have the expression tree if we visit the expression tree in uh, in order traversal you get infix notation if you visit it in pre order traversal you visit you get the uh, uh, prefix notation just like that if you visit uh, it in post order traversal uh, you're going to get the postfix notation right so in your postfix notation you have all your operands first and then the operators come later all right so uh, for the uh, given expression right for the given expression the post fix notation is right there so if you notice the um, the operands like x y you know x 4 2 3 come at the beginning and the operands like plus uh, upward arrow minus and divide by are coming uh, later on Okay, so that kind of an expression is indicative of your postfix notation. So once again, um, uh, when you have a, a mathematical expression in the postfix notation, you can directly calculate uh, the value of the expression while it is still in the postfix notation without having to uh, convert it into infix notation. And that's what we are going to learn with the example that is given to us. All right, and how do you do that? So in the prefix notation, you are moving from back to front, right? In the expression, you were moving from back to front. But in the postfix notation, you have to move uh, uh, over the expression from front to back until you hit an operator, okay? So you start from the back, move front until you hit an operator, 7, 2, 3, and then you hit plus, uh, and you then you hit the multiplication. So you stop there. And then you apply the multiplies to the previous two operands. So 2 times 3 gives you 6. And in the next step, 2, 3, and multiplication symbol are going to be replaced by the uh, number 6. Okay? So now, once again, you start from the right and move, uh, you start from the left and move towards right. 
okay so you move forward in the expression so you start at seven go to six and then you hit a, uh, and then you hit a, a minus symbol uh, and you hit the minus symbol okay uh, minus operator and that's where you stop so you're going to apply the minus operator on the previous two operands that is seven and six so you have to do seven minus six and then replace seven six and minus in the next step with the result of seven minus six which is one so once again you're going to start traversing until you hit an operator so you have one four and then you have hit an operator which is upward arrow uh, that is uh, representative of your uh, power to the power of so what you need to do is 1 to the power of 4 so that gives you 1 right so in the next step 1 4 and upward arrow are all going to be replaced by just the value 1 so in the next step once again you start at the left move right so you have 1 9 3 and then you hit the operator which is divided by okay so now you're going to apply divided by on the previous two operands which is 9 and 3 so 9 divided by 3 uh, gives you 3 so in the next step you have to replace 9 3 and divide by symbol with the uh, uh, value of 9 divided by 3 which is 3 okay now once again you start at left move towards right so you have crossed 1 3 and then you hit uh, plus right and stop right there okay and then you apply plus operator to the previous two operands that is one and three so that gives you one plus three and it evaluates to your answer which is four so what you have taken here uh, what you have done here is that taken a post fix notation of a mathematical expression and solved it without converting it into your infix notation all right so once again in your homework you have a different uh, expressions which are in prefix and postfix notation and you have been asked to evaluate the expression and you have to do so while it is still in the postfix notation or while it is still in the prefix notation right without basically changing it into your infixed notation okay so we are done with the uh, uh, graph tra uh, traversal the next topic we're going to look at is spanning trees okay so uh, once again this has a lot of applications going forward you are going to look at spanning trees and also something called minimum spanning trees we're not going to cover minimum spanning trees in uh, uh, the course here but uh, that is a very uh, interesting uh, problem in graph theory and in computer science uh, basically finding minimum spanning trees uh, but in here we are only going to look at spanning trees uh, how to get a spanning tree from a graph right and uh, there are two pro uh, uh, processes right uh, the first one is a depth first search and the next one is called a breadth first search uh, uh, of a graph that actually gives you two different uh, uh, spanning trees all right and we're also going to look at how uh, you can do a depth first search in a directed graph to give uh, to give you uh, either a, uh, a single tree or multiple trees that all together give you a forest okay so now uh, let's uh, take a look at the definition uh, of a spanning tree okay so if you are given a simple graph let's say g okay then uh, the spanning uh, tree of the graph G is basically a subgraph right is a subgraph of G which uh, should not uh, which should be a tree all right which should be a tree that means it should connect all the vertices which are in graph G and without cycles all right so uh, for example if uh, you have been uh, given the following um, uh, graph right and you're asked to uh, find the spanning tree for the graph uh, 
uh, a simple way to go about it is to first remove edges that would add cycles in the graph, all right? Uh, and do not remove edges which would disconnect the graph, all right? So those are the two simple rules that you would follow in order to build a spanning tree from a given graph, all right? So for example, if you consider the graph that is given to you, all right, in the first step, if you remove the edge AE, okay, that is the edge AE, because AE, uh, F and B is forming a cycle, right? If you remove the edge AE, you're removing one cycle from the graph, okay? So that is your first step. Now, you still have two more uh, cycles in the graph, right? Uh, in the next step, if you remove the edge EF, okay, which is going to be that edge, okay? If you remove the edge EF, you are going to remove another cycle that would have formed by E, F, and G, okay? So you're removing uh, another edge from the graph G. Now, uh, that gives you uh, the graph in, uh, in your figure B. Uh, now, there is still one more cycle, C, F, and G, that you see uh, in uh, the graph, right? So let's say if you were to remove that edge, uh, the edge uh, C, comma, uh, G, uh, sorry, the edge, yeah, CG, then you would remove the cycle that would be formed by G, F, and C, okay? So that would give you the, the graph in the uh, third figure, all right? So if you notice, figure C is actually a tree. It's not a graph anymore, all right? Because uh, all the uh, vertices are connected and there are no cycles, Okay, so what you have come up with is called a spanning tree of the given graph, all right? It's a spanning tree of the given graph, G. Now, uh, this is easy uh, for us to do because uh, this was a simple graph. You could directly see what cycles were in it. But when the uh, uh, graph becomes larger and larger with more and more number of vertices, uh, just looking at the graph and coming up with a spanning tree may not be the best way to go about it. All right, and that is where you have to use some algorithms or protocols that you need to follow the steps of to get the spanning tree from a given graph. So before we move forward and look at the uh, DFS, that is depth first search and BFS, that is breadth first search algorithms to find, the, uh, to find the spanning tree of a given graph. So let's take a look at this simple theorem here. Okay, what does it say? A graph, uh, a simple graph is connected if and only if it has a spanning tree. Okay, so that is one way to tell uh, if uh, a given graph is a connected graph or a disconnected graph. Okay, so if you're able to come up with a spanning tree for the graph, then that means that graph is a connected graph. That means all the vertices, there is a way to reach all the vertices from any other vertex in the graph. Okay, but if it is not a connected graph, so there are disconnected components in the graph, then you cannot come up with a spanning tree for the given graph. All right, so uh, here are the steps uh, that are required for you to follow to come up with the uh, depth first search tree or the, uh, the spanning tree of a given graph. Uh, uh, of a given graph using the depth for search. So in uh, simple words, how you go about doing this is basically first pick one of the vertices to be uh, the uh, root of your uh, spanning tree. Okay, then uh, pick uh, one of the edges that directly connects this uh, uh, root to uh, another vertex. Okay, and then uh, add that to your tree. All right, then you're going to pick another vertex which is connected to the second vertex that you added to the tree, okay? Uh, and uh, then you're going to find another vertex that is going to connect to the previously added vertex. So you're going to increase the length of the graph uh, uh, and you go, you're going to keep on doing this uh, as long as there are new vertices that need to be added to the tree and also the newly added vertex should not add any cycles to your 
um, uh, to your uh, tree. Okay, uh, so this procedure is called the depth first search. I'm not going to go over the steps of this depth first search in detail. Instead, I'm going to go over the example of how the depth first search is uh, done on a given graph to find the spanning tree of the graph in the next slide. All right, so uh, let's uh, take the example of the given graph. All right, and we want to find the spanning tree of the graph. All right, so a spanning tree should not have any cycles and uh, it should be fully connected. All right, so uh, we are going to use the depth first search in order to uh, uh, find the spanning tree for uh, the given graph. All right, so let's arbitrarily pick or randomly pick one of the vertices to uh, be the root. All right, so in the example given below, uh, F has been picked out to be uh, uh, the uh, the root. Okay, you could basically pick any single vertex. Right, you can actually pick any single vertex to become the root. Uh, the only difference is you're going to get a new spanning tree depending on the uh, uh, depending on the uh, the uh, vertex that you pick to become the root. Okay, so you your answer can be uh, varying, right? When you're trying to find the uh, the depth first search uh, 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 spanning tree, uh, your answers can be different, all right, based on which node or which vertex has been picked out to be the root of the tree, okay? So uh, let's say uh, vertex uh, F has been picked as the root, okay, as shown in figure A. Now you're going to uh, build a path by continuously adding uh, edges that do not add any cycles, all right, that should not add any cycles. And uh, basically, you are going to keep connecting new vertices to the uh, given uh, node, all right, or, uh, or you're going to keep adding new vertices to the tree. So you start with F, all right, so F is connected to say G, so you're going to add G there, you're going to connect, G is connected to H, so you're going to add H. H is connected to K and I, so let's say you picked K. So the next vertex to be added is K. Now K is connected to J. Now at this point you have reached uh, a, a situation where J is not connected to any other new vertices, right? So uh, when you T, uh, when you reach a, a situation like that, you have to back up, all right, to the previous uh, or to the last added vertex in your graph. And in this case, it is going to be K. And then you're going to look uh, and see if uh, your uh, vertex K has any new uh, vertices that it is connected to other than H or J. But you see that K is not connected to any other vertex other than H or J. So you have to back up one more. So you go back to the node H. Now you're going to see if H is connected to any other vertices uh, other than, of course, K and F. Uh, of course, uh, you also need to see that this new edge that you will be adding does not add any cycles. All right. So it is H is connected to I. So you can add that to your tree now. So H and I is going to be added to the tree in your step C. Now, does I connect you to any other new vertex? No. So you once again have to back up and you come back to H, all right? Does H connect you to any other new vertices? No, it does not. So you have to back up one more and you go back to uh, G, all right? So uh, you are going to go back to G. So now you're going to look if G is connected to any other new vertices. The answer is no. So you have to back up one more and go back to your root. That is going to be your F. Now see if F basically can connect you to any other new vertices. And the answer is yes. F is connected to D and F is also connected to E. You could pick any way. In this example, we have picked D next. All right. So B, D has been picked next. So you add D to your tree. Next, now is D connected to anything new? Yes, it is connected to E. E is added next. Is E connected to anything new? Yes, it is connected to C. So let's add C to it. 
okay now is c connected to anything new yes it is connected to a and b we could pick either one and let's say in this example we picked a okay so a is added to the tree so from a can we uh, connect to a new vertex no so we have to back up in the tree so we back up to c all right and see if we can uh, add a new vertex to c can we yes b is still not in the tree so we are going to add b as a new uh, vertex right in your tree and then uh, from b can you add a new vertex no you cannot so once again you back up and you come back to c so uh, c does not have any other new vertices so you go back to e e does not have any other new vertices to add d d does not have any other new vertices you go back to f f uh, from f i think you've covered everything you've gone to g have gone to d no more new vertices all right so this is the end so figure c here is basically giving you a minimum spanning tree uh, and how do you get that using your depth first search procedure right so there are examples in your homework where you're given a graph and you're asked to find uh, a spanning tree using the depth first search and your breadth first search i want you to work on those examples and if you have questions come back during office hours and ask me later on okay so uh, just a little bit of terminology that you need to know so after you build a depth first search uh, after you do a depth first search and build a spanning tree okay uh, the edges which are in your tree are called the uh, tree edges and the edges that have been removed from the graph to get your tree uh, are called your back edges okay because these edges basically join you back to one of the uh, existing vertices in the tree to one of your ancestors and that's why these are called the back edges so in the given example everything that is in blue is basically a tree edge so it's an edge in the tree the edges that have been removed are those two edges which are uh, your back edges so the edges ef and fh are your back edges in your given graph okay so here is the algorithm uh, or rather the pseudocode uh, that you need to follow to get your uh, depth first search uh, 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 spanning tree okay so you do not need to memorize this okay this is just in case you want to go over and uh, understand how uh, the, de the depth first search would yield or would give you a spanning tree okay once again you do not have to memorize this uh, this is just for you to understand it a little better okay so the next uh, kind of uh, uh, algorithm that we're going to look at is called the breadth first search right so uh, this also uh, gives you a spanning tree from a given graph right however in here how does uh, this go about once again you have to pick one of the existing vertices from your graph as the root right and you can pick any uh, of the vertices to become the root okay uh, however uh, uh, every time you pick a new root you're going to end up with a new breadth first search tree okay you're going to end up with a new spanning tree depending on the root that you pick right so once you have picked the root what do you do you're going to connect all the edges that are connected uh, to the root all right uh, and write down all the vertices that are connected through these edges okay so we are going to add all the vertices which are at a level one in your graph all right uh, from the chosen root then you are going to add all the vertices that are connected to any of these vertices that were added uh, uh, at your level one okay so uh, in the second step you're going to get, uh, add all the edge uh, all the edges connecting to any new vertices uh, which are at a level two from your uh, root node okay once again when you're picking a new vertex you have to make sure that it does not add a cycle in your 
tree. You have to make sure of that before you add it to uh, the breakfast search tree. So you keep on going uh, until you run out of any new vertices that can be added uh, to uh, the, the to the uh, tree, right? And you have basically covered all the vertices that are in the graph. And that's when you get your breakfast search tree. All right, so here is an example of uh, how to build a, a breadth-first uh, search tree or a minimum spanning tree from a graph using the breadth-first search, right? So uh, the example we are going to consider is given right there, okay? And uh, how exactly are we going to uh, build, a uh, build a minimum spanning tree? The first step is choose a root. Okay, so uh, let's say in this example, E has been chosen as the root. Okay, so your node E has been chosen as the root. So mind you, once again, you can choose any uh, vertex as the root. The only thing is you're going to get a different BFS tree. You're going to get a different spanning tree depending on the root that you chose. And all of them are going to be correct. Right? There is no correct answer here. All of them are going to be correct. So let's say you picked E as the root. Okay? So let's look at it step by step. So E has been added as the root. Now we're going to connect all the edges that go from E to a new vertex. So from E, you have edges to uh, B, you have edge to D, you have edge to F, and I. Okay? So these four uh, vertices are going to be added in the next step, and they're at a level 1, all right, from your root node. Now, uh, we are going to add any new vertices, which have already not been added in the previous step. Uh, that would connect to the uh, vertices which are already in your tree. So let's look from B. From B, are there any uh, new vertices? Yes, there is A and there is C, right? So A and C have been added in the next step. Now let's look uh, at D. D, no, A has already been added. So what do you have here? You have H. So from D, you can add an H. So uh, what else is there? So you have F. From F, uh, you have C and you have J. So J hasn't been already added. Uh, and oh, of course, you have G as well. So from F, you have G and J. So G and J are added in the next step. Now, uh, what are you left with? You're left with uh, I. So from I, can you add uh, a new vertex? Uh, yes, the new vertex that can be added is K. All right, so from I, you are going to add a K here. Okay, you are going to add a K here. So now uh, you have added all the vertices that are at a level 2 from the root, at a distance 2 from the root. Now um, let's look at all the vertices that were newly added and see if there are any vertices that can connect to one of these newly added vertices. So let's start with A. All right, so A, can it connect to any other new vertices? No. So move on to the next one, C. C cannot connect you to any other new vertices. What about H? H cannot connect us to any new vertices. What about uh, G? Uh, G, um, G, where is G? Uh, G is right there. And yes, G can connect us to a new vertex L. So we add that vertex in the next step. So what about J? J cannot add us to any other um, a new vertex. And the next in line is K. And yes, K can add M to the uh, tree. So K, uh, you add M to uh, the vertex K. All right. So now we are going to go over all the newly added vertices and see if there is any other vertex that's left over. Okay, so L, uh, where is your L? L is right there, and L does not connect us to any other new vertex. The next one is M, which is right there, and M does not connect to any other new vertex. So we are done with our spanning tree. Okay, so what we have here is called a breadth first search based uh, spanning tree. Okay, so once again, depending on 
what node you picked out to be the root right in this case you picked e as the root okay if you had picked some other node as the root some other vertex as the root then you may end up with a different spanning tree all right so uh, now here is the pseudo code that basically describes uh, how the breadth first search uh, algorithm uh, creates a, a spanning tree from uh, a given graph, right? So you do not have to memorize this algorithm, right? You just need to know how to apply the breadth first search algorithm given a graph and get a spanning tree from it, right? But you do not need to memorize this algorithm. It's just here for you to if, go over and understand the process that we just covered in the previous slide. Okay, so you do not need to memorize the breadth first search algorithm that is given here. All right, so lastly, the last thing that we're going to cover in this chapter is the uh, depth first search, but in a directed graph. So in the previous examples that we have looked at, we have looked at depth first search generating a spanning tree from a graph, but it was an undirected graph. Right. However, we can also use the depth first search to generate a, 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 a probably a spanning tree or multiple spanning trees from a directed graph. Right. So when you have a directed graph at hand, you cannot always say that you can come up with a single tree. Right. You can basically end up with multiple disconnected components. Right. And you, what you may get is basically a forest, uh, a, a forest of spanning trees rather than just a single spanning tree. Right. So let's take an example and uh, work on it to understand uh, how to come up with a, a spanning tree uh, using the depth first search in a directed graph. So let's consider the graph that has given to uh, that has been given to us in figure A. OK, so uh, once again, we have to pick one of the nodes uh, to be the root. Right. So let's say we begin with the vertex A as the root. OK, let's say we begin at vertex A at the root. Then you're going to add all the paths. You're going to do a DFS uh, and see which uh, 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 which uh, vertices can be connected. So from A, uh, you can either go to B or to E. So let's say you picked A next. Uh, you, uh, you picked B next. OK, so B is added uh, to the tree. So from B, you can either go to F or C. All right. Let's say you picked a C next. OK, so you added a C to your tree. So from C, where can you go? You can go to G. All right. So you can go to G from C. So G is added to your tree. All right. From G, can you go to any other new vertex? No. So every uh, uh, vertex is basically incoming into G. There is no outgoing vertex from G. So you have to back up and see if C adds, uh, C can add another vertex. So from C, can you go anywhere else? No, every other vertex is incoming onto C. So let's back up one more and move on to B. From B, can you go to another place? Yes, you can add F to it, all right? You can add F to the tree. So F is added to the tree, okay? Now from F, you're gonna see if you can go anywhere else. Yes, there is an outgoing edge from F towards E. OK, so E is added uh, to your tree next. OK, so now uh, from E, can you go anywhere else? Every edge is incoming at E, so you cannot go anywhere from E. Back off and see, look at F. Uh, you have already visited G, so you cannot go any place new from F. You back up again and you go to B, right? From B, can you go to any other new vertex? No, you cannot. So you back up to A. From A, can you go to any other new vertex? No. So this is uh, the first tree that you got uh, from the uh, DFS uh, algorithm on the directed graph. However, you still have other vertices that haven't been visited. OK, so now in the next step, you have to pick 
another unused vertex as the root and start the DFS algorithm once again. Right? So let's say you started with D as the root. Okay? So from D, can you visit any other unvisited vertex? C has already been visited in your previous tree, so you cannot visit C. So you can visit H. So H is added to your uh, tree. From H, can you go anywhere else? Yes, you can go to G, but G has already been visited in the previous tree. So the only other way you can go is to L. From L, can you go anywhere else? Yes, you can go to K. From K, can you go anywhere else? Yes, you can go to J. From J, there are only uh, uh, basically uh, incoming vertices or it uh, has an edge that goes to uh, already visited vertex. So you do not want to take that route. So you back up, come back to K and see if there are any new vertices you can add. No, there aren't. You come back to L and see if there are any new vertices you can add. No, there aren't. You come back to H, see if there are any new vertices. No, you cannot. And you come back to D uh, and see if there are any new vertices you can add. No, they're not. But there is still one more vertex left. And the next tree that you start with is going to use at that as the root of uh, the next tree. But from I, uh, you cannot go to any other new vertex, so your third component is just going to be a single vertex. So what you have ended up here with is three different components or three different trees. So your DFS on a directed graph is more likely to generate a forest or a collection of trees rather than a single tree. All right, so uh, practice the uh, assignment, homework assignment, and I'm going to post uh, basically uh, the uh, office hours for uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday when you can come in and uh, ask me questions, all right, uh, on all the video lectures and the lectures that we have covered. Uh, and there are not going to be any more classes, right? There are not going to be any more classes. And this is going to be the last uh, topic that we are going to cover for uh, the final exam. So please uh, uh, work on the problems in the homework, right? The last homework and come back to me if you have questions during the office hours that I'm going to post uh, uh, in, uh, in an email very soon, okay? Good luck on your final.